What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here and this is the Motorola Moto G Power 2022 and in this video we're going to be taking a look at a variety of different tips and tricks and hidden features about the phone so let's get started. Now one of the signature features of the Moto G Power 2022 is that it has a very large battery but unfortunately by default we don't actually get the battery percentage in the upper right corner. We do have the battery icon, which does give us a little bit of an idea on how much battery is left, but we don't have the actual percentage. So let me show you how to do that. So to get the percentage, you're gonna pull down the shade, you're gonna go to the gear, which takes you to the settings. You're then gonna go up to search, type in battery percent, percentage there we go and you'll see right there battery percentage tap on that and then right here battery percentage show battery percentage in the status bar make sure that's enabled and now with that there enabled we can now go anywhere throughout the operating system and we will have the battery percentage in the upper right corner so definitely very helpful there now in addition to that in this battery area there are some other options and useful features. So the first one here is called battery saver. So essentially, if it seems like your phone is getting low on battery and you don't have access to a charger anytime soon, or if you just know that you have a long day ahead of you without access to recharge the device, then you can enable battery saver, which will disable a variety of different background activities in order to preserve battery life. So to do this, you can simply turn it on right now. And then now battery saver will remain on by default until your phone is recharged to at least 90%. So most of the core functions that you would use your smartphone for typically will still be enabled during this battery saver function. But by enabling this, you are disabling a lot of background tasks, which will preserve your battery life as much as possible. You can also head back here at any time and turn off battery saver. Next, I'll show you how to take a screenshot with the Moto G Power 2022. Now there are several different methods for doing this, which is why I wanted to include it in this video. Now one method is just by holding down the power button and volume down at the same time. So there we go, it does take a screenshot using that method, which you can then share or delete or edit if you want to. Now the second method is a little bit more hidden, and this is called three finger screenshot. Now this is enabled by default, but just in case it's not, you can go to the settings and type in three finger screenshot and it will pop up here and you can double check on whether or not it's enabled. But essentially to capture a screenshot, touch and hold anywhere on the screen with three of your fingertips spread slightly apart. So again, it is enabled. So we'll give this a try. There we go. It just took a screenshot very quickly here. Then from there, we can go ahead and edit it. So you can crop it, you can draw over it, you could add text all kinds of different options, but that is another method for taking a screenshot here with the Moto G Power 2022. Now with the Moto G Power 2022, by default, we do have gesture-based navigation. Now this has been around for several years at this point with Android phones, but I know that many people are still used to and prefer the traditional three button Android navigation. Now, thankfully, you can bring that back here with the Moto G Power 2022. So instead of having to swipe up every time you want to leave an app or swiping partially up to go to your recent apps or swiping from the left to go back, you can get the three buttons down below. So to do this, pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, type in navigation, and you'll see right here system navigation. So tap on that. And now we'll take you to the gesture menu, but go here to system navigation once again. And then you have the option between gesture navigation and three button navigation. So you can make some modifications by the way to the gesture navigation, just in case it's too sensitive or not sensitive enough. But if you do wanna go back to the original three button navigation that you're probably very familiar with, especially if you've used Android devices in the past, then it is right here. So just tap on that button right there and give it a second. And now you can see we do have the original three button navigation, which has been with Android almost since the beginning. You can also go back and go to your recent apps very easily as well. And that's why they give you the ability to switch back because they know that not everybody is gonna like gesture-based navigation. But if you do wanna revert back to it, it's very easy to do that here within the settings. Now by default, if you wanna easily access Google Assistant, all you have to do is double tap on the power button 
and it pulls up assistant right there. But if you want it to pull up the camera instead, let me show you how to do that. So you're gonna pull down the shade, go to the settings, you're gonna go up to search, and you're gonna type in double press, and give it a second here, and you'll see right there, double press power key. And this is within the gesture section of the settings, but go to double press power key once again, and then you have three different options. So by default, it does launch the assistant, but if you want it to launch nothing when double pressing, you can do that as well. Or if you want to, you can double press to launch the camera. And now when I go to the power button and double press, it does pull up the camera app right away. And in this situation, not only of course do I have the default camera app, but I also have Snapchat on the device and it does give me an option to have Snapchat act as the main camera instead. But to have it pull up the regular camera all the time, just select that camera and then go to always. And then now, anytime that you double press on the power button, it will pull up the camera app. So that's definitely very convenient. Now, in addition to that, there are some other gestures that are enabled by default, but you might not be aware of them. So another one here is fast flashlight. So essentially you can turn the flashlight on or off with two chopping motions. There we go, flashlight's on, flashlight's now off. And then another one I wanna show you is called quick capture. So you can twist your wrist twice quickly to open up the camera at any time. There we go, it opens up the camera. Let me do this somewhere else within the operating system. There we go, it pulls up the camera again. So I really like how these gestures not only are useful and practical, but also work very consistently. Now the next one I wanna show you is called Flip for DND. So essentially if you lay your phone face flat on a table or any surface for that matter, it will switch the phone into do not disturb mode. So that's very helpful when you're going in meetings, for example. So we'll pull down the shade here, go to the settings, go to search, type in flip, and you'll see right there, flip for DND. And that is actually off by default, but again, by enabling this, it will turn on do not disturb if you lay the phone face flat down. There we go, it is now in do not disturb. I heard the phone's haptic motor go off, and then when picking up the phone, I can feel the haptic motor go off once again, and the phone is now out of do not disturb mode. So definitely a pretty useful feature there. Now the next feature I wanna show you is something that you can pretty much find with any smartphone, but it is something that you might wanna keep in mind, especially if you're just now setting up your Moto G Power 2022. And that is the screen timeout settings. And in addition to that, I'm gonna show you one other important thing too that you'll definitely wanna keep in mind. So go to the settings, Go to display and you're going to see under advanced screen timeout. Now by default, I believe it was set at 30 seconds, but since I've been making videos about this phone, I did switch it over to 30 minutes, but essentially after whatever amount of time of no activity, the phone screen will then time out. So 30 seconds might be okay for most people out there. For me personally, I do prefer one to two minutes. I just don't really like when the screen times out quite as fast as 30 seconds. But if you want it to time out even faster, you can even switch it to 15 seconds. So definitely something I recommend trying and testing for different times here to see which one best suits your needs. But there's two other things I wanna show you. The first one is the display colors. So by default, the display actually features natural colors, which I feel like kind of gave the display a little bit of a yellow tint to it. So I'm not really a big fan of that. And from the beginning, when I originally set up this phone, I did switch it over to saturated instead. And I feel like it just gives things a little bit of a cooler look to it. And it does say that it does enhance the color saturation for a vivid display. And that is the way that I personally prefer it. And you also have the ability to further adjust the color temperature in this slider right here. So definitely a lot of different options here. You can see you can have it really cool if you want to or extremely warm but I prefer to have it kind of right in the middle there. But I definitely recommend heading over here and trying different tones to see what you prefer. And then the last thing I'll show you, and this is new with the Moto G Power 2022, considering that we are getting a 90 Hertz display with the phone, but that is the display refresh rate. So we have two options here. We have either auto, which will use AI to determine whether the phone should use 90 Hertz or 60 Hertz, or you can just have it be at 60 Hertz which means that the frame rate of the display won't be quite as fast. Now, all previous Moto G Power devices prior to this one only had 60 Hertz. So if you're switching from 
a previous model of this phone, then 60 hertz will be completely familiar to you. The 90 hertz refresh rate is a new, better, faster refresh rate that kind of gives you a more premium experience when using the phone. But again, if you want to just set the phone to 60 hertz only, that will increase your battery life. But I personally recommend keeping it at auto unless for some reason you just feel like the phone isn't lasting very long. But unless you're specifically noticing battery life issues, I would just keep it at auto. But this is something to keep in mind. But these are a variety of different tips, tricks, and hidden features related to the Moto G Power 2022. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm definitely curious to know what you think about this device. Do you think this is a good budget device? Or do you feel like there's better options out there? I'm definitely curious to know what you think in the comment section below. But I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.